Welcome to WeLearn Virtual Learning Network. This is session number 7 Vision of Social Transformation. Topics which we are going to cover in this session are Significance of a Return Constitution, Preamble to a Constitution, The Indian Vision, Rights as the Core of the Nationalist Program, Ideological Limitations, The Congress consequences, unfolding of the social economic program, the Congress resolution on the objective of the constitution, the objective resolution of the constituent assembly and the structural limitations. Coming towards the first topic that is the significance of a written constitution. There are four points about a written constitution. These are constitution as a positive law, its contractual nature, philosophy of the constitution and the constitution and justice. Coming towards the first topic that is constitution as a positive law. The constitution derives its authority from itself. It is therefore future oriented as a body of supreme laws of the constitution take pre precedence only over all the laws but also over all customs, traditions and faiths. Such customs and traditions etc. are valid as long as they do not conflict with the constitution. In other words, no provision of the constitution can be challenged on the plea that it is inconsistent with the tradition, belief and faith inherited from the past. The second point is its contractual nature. A democratic constitution is a kind of contract among all the people or at least the bulk of people. It is based on the consequences, a product of bargain among several persons and groups. Such a contract cannot satisfy all persons fully, but it does satisfy most of them partially. In other words, it is a kind of common minimum program of the majority of people which does not harm the minority in trust. The third point is philosophy of constitution. Every democratic constitution has a philosophy and a vision which can be summed up as a growth and stability. These two concepts are interrelated. Without growth, no stability can be assured and without stability, no growth can be achieved. Coming towards the fourth point that is constitution and justice. Integrally connected with the concept of growth and stability is the concept of justice. No unjust system can make people happy and an unhappy people cannot work either for stability or for the growth of a country. Coming towards the second topic that is preamble is a constitution. In all the written document Documentric constitution, one finds a preamble which presents a vision for the future. Democracy is essentially transformational. The vision of the social transformation is reflected in the preamble of the constitution of India. The next topic is the Indian vision. Such a vision of transformation is embedded in popular aspiration. It develops historically. The vision is divided into four, sorry, three subparts. These are the anti-inspiralist legacy. In India, this vision developed out of her struggle against the British Empire and was nourished by the liberal democratic thinking in the developed world. It was first expressed by the critics of colonial rule in the 
लेट नाइनटीन सेंचुरी बाय द पीपल लाइक दारा भाई नेहरोजी एम जी रांद्रे एंड आर सी दत् एंड ऑफ इमर्शलाइजेशन हैज सीन टू बी द बेसिक प्री कंडीशन ऑफ इंडियाज प्रोग्रेस मोमेंट्स फॉर द सोशल जस्टिस साइड बाय साइड विद दिस ब्रॉड एंटी इम्पेरियलिस्ट स्ट्रगल ग्रू द डिमांड फॉर सोशल जस्टिस ज्योतिभा फूले इनलाज द सोशल रिफॉर्म एजेंडा ऑफ द अर्लियर नाइनटीन सेंचुरी थिंकर्स एंड एक्टिविस्ट लाइक राम मोहन रॉय ईश्वर चंद्र विद्यासागर एंड दयानंदा सरस्वती द नेशनलिस्ट प्रोग्राम द इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस वॉज बॉर्न थ्रू द मॉडरेट एफर्ट्स टू यूनिफाई ऑल सेक्शंस ऑफ इंडिया थ्रू इनिशियली इट वॉज इनलिस्टेड इन द ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी एंड एंटी एम्पेरलिस्ट कॉन्टेस्ट वॉज ग्रेजुअली अनफोल्डेड coming towards the next topic that is the rights as the core of the nationalist program these rights are divided into the four parts these are influence of socialism the idea of socialism was catching the imagination of the indians within the congress its strongest advocate was pandit jawahar lal nehru who however did not approved by the authoritarian trend of the soviet policy gandhi ji did not approve of the socialist doctrine of class conflict but worked for the social and economic justice second point is poverty relief and planning after the passage of the government of india act 1935 several provincial government granted reliefs to the poor peasants the congress president appointed a national planning committee after world war 2 the congress adopted the program of land reform including the abolition of zamindari system next point is role of the leftist group in 1930s leftist party and groups arose within the congress and outside it they were strong advocate of socialism and land reform even the krishak proja party of bengal and the section of the all india muslim league were supporters of socialism and land reforms last point is opposition to caste operations Dr B R Ambedkar shared the belief in socialism and land reform but was more concerned with the welfare and progress of the people opposed by the caste system by the time of independence in our country the outlines of the principles of growth and justice has become fairly visible next is the ideological limitation ideological limitation there are two ideological limitations number 1 is clash character of the indian national congress the indian national congress which dominated the constituent assembly of india was not a socialist party nor was it a party of social reforms devoted to the abolition of caste system and the second limitation is stress on politics the constituent assembly of india was engaged in preparing a constitution for the governance of india when two members of the constituent assembly moved for incorporation of the term socialist in the preamble to the indian constitution the dra- drafting committee turned it down to the plea that the constitution need not in share a social philosophy the next topic is the congress consequences 
the broad idea of the indian national congress about the constitution could be summed up as the parliamentary tradition and the parliamentary government the politically centralized but culturally diversified federal states and the last is the dynamic social order coming towards the parliamentary tradition the tradition of parliamentary government had been developing ever since the introduction of the montgage clems fort reforms in 1919 The Muslim League had similar experience with 1919 reform. Both the Congress and the Muslim League, of course, accepted office under the government of the Indian Act 1935. Next is the federalism. The idea of a federation sprang from the de- devolution of powers by the government of Indian Act 1935 to the All party conference of 1928 had earlier suggested a federal form of government to manage the religious and linguistic diversities of the country the partition weakened the caste of federalism on religion ground next is the welfareism the Indian freedom movement was a mass movement and required the participation of these broadest section of the masses that were made up to poor uneducated and backward people the idea of a mass welfare however varied from person to person and section to section of the political leadership coming towards the next topic that is unfolding of the social economic program the manifesto of the congress party for provisional assembly election of early 1946 prom- promised the following industry and agriculture the social services and public utilities must be encouraged modernized and rapidly extended next are what strategies they made to plan and coordinate social evidence in all fields to prevent concentration of wealth and power in few hands to prevent wasted interest inimical to society from growing to have social control of the mineral resu- resources means of transport and principal methods of production and distribution in land industry and in other departments of national activity next are the specific objectives reforms of land system in order to remove intermediaries between the state and the person on the payment of equitable compensation was urgently necessary promotion of educational opportunities and health service was needed improvement of the worker workers working condition in industry and removal of rural in uh, indebtedness were promoted the party looked forward to international cooperation and friendship next topic is the congress resolution on the objective of the constitution the congress leader were aware that the constitution was primarily a political document so it must state the political structure first the broadest on outline of the structure was spelled out in the congress resolution on the objective of the constitution passed on november 28 1946 twenty days before the constitution assembly met according to this resolution the congress stood for an independent sovereign republic where in 
all powers and authorities are derived from the people next topic is the objective resolution of the constituent assembly according to this resolution the constituent constitution would guarantee to all the people of india justice social economic and political equality of status of opportunity and before the law freedom of thought expression belief faith workmanship vocation association and action subject to law and public mortality adequate safeguards for monitor monitories backward and tribal areas and depressed and other backward classes last topic is the structural limitation a constituent assembly can only give shape to the transformation that has been brought about by a social or political re- revolution a constituent assembly cannot make a revolution it was argued that a constitution does not lay down an economic system so that's all for the session questions based on this session are explain class character of the national indian national congress and stress on politics explain mainly justice equality freedom of all section of social society that's all for this session thank you happy learning we learning